everyone. So for a little background, um, my name is Elena Coleman. And I'm a student slash faculty member here at Spalding College. Um, I'm from Chicago, Illinois, and I'm actually graduating this May. You may wonder why I'm doing a college senior presentation, also, although I'm not a professor just yet. Well, I felt the need to reach out to you, my fellow peers, to bring awareness to the fact that the liberal arts education is super valuable and why we need to take it more seriously. Yes, liberal arts education is expensive, but it is an investment because it teaches us employability, ethics, critical thinking, and communication, curiosity, creativity, the list goes on. These things I have just named actually have a name. Wait for it. They're called skills, soft skills, <laughs> to be specific. They're actually the leaves on our college student presentation poster. Now I know what you're thinking. Why, am I, why are you looking at a spider web in the stages to build one? Well, one of my main points that I will be discussing is that we should build our web with the liberal arts education courses and its soft skills that sprout from them. So say you're the spider, and you start off with no web, but as you grow, your web gets larger and larger. The more educated you become, the larger your web gets. I'd imagine that if I hadn't gone to college, um, my web would sort of just stop growing. Not saying that people who haven't gone to college don't learn, but we who participate in the liberal arts education have a better chance at growing our web and finding our path in life. Appreciate the liberal arts education because knowledge in action equals power. Knowledge gives us the power to be able to utilize the tools of the liberal arts. Knowledge, I'm sorry, however, knowledge has no value if we don't apply what we have learned to our everyday life. Why is liberal arts education so expensive? Because it holds great value. The knowledge that we gain from liberal arts education gives us the power to change things like global warming. Right now in the United States, it may not seem like global warming even exists, but, it, but the reality is that it does. The continent, South America, Africa, and the most recent, Australia, has experienced high economic da damage because of the impact of climate change. From the Australian fire, 24, 24 people, 500 million animals, and 8,000 koalas have died. Also, over 5.5 million hectares and were burnt, and more than 1,400 homes were destroyed. Why should we care if they're not a part of the United States? Well, imagine if that was your home, your family member, or pet. If we don't progress and make changes for the better, <coughs> generations after us can have a precious life. That's what the liberal arts teaches us. It teaches us to really like think about things like global warming, the uh, poverty crisis, and inequality. The liberal arts education teaches us to ask why. We should be more like Curious George. If you don't know who Curious George is, he's a cartoon character. A monkey who gets into everything he could possibly get into, just like a child. Curious George is a handful, but throughout the show, he truly learns things about the world. It's okay to question things. Personally, I grew up being taught not to question things, to just go with the flow. However, once I took world religion taught by Mr. Zellman, that concept was challenged. It is, isn't it hard to go against what you've been taught all your life? It was for me. Because of the liberal arts education, I've learned that it's actually okay to ask why. Without curiosity, we wouldn't have life, we wouldn't have smart board, we wouldn't have soap, we wouldn't have anything. When one questions things, they learn, they learn more about whatever it is they're wanting to know about. The liberal arts education teaches us how to communicate effectively. Without taking speech communication, taught by Ms. Vandy, I wouldn't be able to present to you all today. With effective communication, our chances of getting a really nice job increases. We have, we have to communicate not only in our workplace, but also in our everyday life. Communicating effectively helps us to progress socially and prevent misunderstandings. So value classes like composition and speech. I love course, courses that classify as humanities because they all have a clear connection to the real world. Classes like introductions to literature, philosophy, and of course ethics teaches us to be ethical. To be ethical is to have morals, 
that you stand by, such as honesty, equality, and dignity. Someone who is ethical is honest and fair, even when no one is watching. It's important to do what's right because of karma. What goes around comes around. When you do good things, good things always come back to you. Also, when you're ethical and you show that you're genuine in interviews, you're more likely to be hired. Soft skills like ethics help you in the long run. Social science courses like social psychology, sociology, and American history all teach us citizenship or civic skills. What are citizenship skills? An attitude of group awareness and willingness to help each other reach a common goal. Serious problems like the poverty crisis, inequality, and global warming can be worked towards if we develop civic skills. Civic skills include personal communication skills, knowledge of political systems, and the ability to critically think about civic and political life. Come for 2003. A lot of people aren't into politics but because they feel like it's annoying, but at the end of the day, no matter how much we ignore it, it'll still affect us. With a liberal arts education, I've been able to open my mind to societal problems and the actions to solve them. Through natural science courses like human biology, evolution, and introduction to environmental science, we learn to critically think about our actions and the consequences of them. Environmental science brings awareness to some of the problems that I mentioned earlier, like global warming, inequality, and the poverty crisis. Through environmental science, which I'm taking currently, I have learned to be more selfless and to think about, the, and to think about our environment. Because after all, we need our environment to survive. The environment doesn't need, doesn't need us, so we have to take care of it by buying like less bottled water, um, saving electricity, you know, resisting like shopping online because all that pollution, you know, it hurts the air and stuff like that. Um, one of the things that I like to talk about is the fact that like when I walk in class with a bottle of water, whatever professor, um, Whatever class that I'm in, the professor will like look at me like, you know what that does to the environment. I'm like, yes, I know. I totally forgot, you know, but I really have to be mindful of things like that. So these types of actions go hand in hand with citizenship skills or group awareness. Good critical thinking can draw reasonable conclusions from a set of information and discriminate between, le between useful and less useful details to solve problems or make decisions. Allison Dole. Employers want job candidates who can evaluate a situation using logical thought and offer the best solution. Critical thinking abilities are among the most sought after skills in almost every industry and workplace. You can demonstrate critical thinking by using related keywords in your resume and cover, cover letter <coughs> during your interview. So a lot of people like to say that math isn't their thing, it gives them a headache, and students, <coughs> students who are taking math always end up asking, when am I ever going to use this? <laughs> and so I've asked myself that too. But once I got um, to school for college, like math all of a sudden became my thing. I asked myself why. And I'm like, well, honestly, it's because of Shelly Stewart. <laughs> She's a really great professor. But um, Courses like statistics, business calculus, and college algebra, they really help you to problem solve like real math problems in real life. For example, so I'm sitting in the living room and my grandfather approaches me. He's like, Miss Elena, because that's what he calls me. He's <laughs> like, so if I take out a $30,000 loan with the 1.5 interest rate, how long would it take me to pay that back? And so I found this question quite interesting but I still was determined to give him an answer. So I thought to myself, hmm, what formula would I use? Oh, I know the compound interest formula. So although I love math, I don't just have a graph and calculator handy all the time. So I entered that information into the computer online and I figured out that it takes 40 years. I wouldn't have been able to give my grandfather that answer if it wasn't for the mathematics courses that I've taken in the past. If we know our math, we're less likely to be manipulated by others when doing business. So value your math courses. So if you're ever sitting in class and you think to yourself, why am I taking this course? Well, think about 
how you can apply the information that you're given to real life. There are other soft skills that I haven't mentioned that we also gain through regards to education, like flexibility, versatility, leadership, durability, adaptability, and dependability. So with the liberal arts education, there are things that we have to be mindful of that can lead us onto the road of success. Now I love math, so I thought of a simple equation that might just help you all, help you all along the way. So there's the knowledge that we gain from liberal arts education, and with that knowledge, we have to apply it to real life. Because if we don't apply it, then it's just useless. We also have to have a strong work ethic and work towards our goals because something like success isn't just handed to you. With that, we have to subtract our bad habits like procrastination, tardiness, or absence. Procrastination is personally mine and I always love to tell myself, I got time, I got time, but the reality is, I don't have time. <laughs> so, um, I've been working towards shaking off that bad habit because it truly hinders me from success. I like to always tell myself, actually, Work, work towards getting rid of your ha bad habits because the bad habits that we, that we possess right now will reflect in our workplace. And in the workplace, you can get fired for these things. Also, replace your negative affirmations with positive af affirmations. So when people think, say things like, oh, I'm stupid, math isn't my thing, you should replace those things with, I am smart and math is my thing. Because at the end of the day, our words have power. Any thoughts that we have in our mind or any like thing that we say, you know, it kind of connects to our mind and so in a way we'll start to behave that way. So replace your negative affirmations with positive affirmations. So um, yeah, this is important because our words have power, like I said, and our thoughts are connected to our mind. Um, so when, when we say things like, I can do this, we will actually start to believe that we can do it. So of course, those are not the only things that will lead you onto the road of success, but they'll help you along the way. So back to my main point. I encourage you all to put your best foot forward when you're, while you are participating in liberal arts education. Build your web with the knowledge that you have learned from liberal arts education and utilize the soft skills that are sprouted from the courses. You can do it. Um, special thanks to Faculty and staff, Michael Maher, Mandy Kratz, and Trio staff, and my professors. Thank you. Um, any questions, comments, or concerns? Any thoughts? I loved your build a weapon example. Yeah. That's Thank awesome. You. Thank you. Anyone else? I think no? it's important to point out the positive affirmations. So when you're saying those to yourself, if you're saying, I'm not good at math, um, I hate English, um, when you're rephrasing, I always like to tell students to put the word yet on the end. I'm not good at math yet. But the harder that you work, the better that you will become at it. I like That's a that. good one. Thank you. Anyone else? No? What do you want to be? What do I want to be? Well, um, I want to be a professor, uh, preferably in math in general or sociology, and then eventually I want to go into politics. Okay, we still got five minutes. You're not getting out of here. <laughs> so Orban just mentioned this thing about how much he enjoyed and appreciated the use of, of the web. Right? And Elena is talking about building your web and urging you to use the liberal arts to build your web. So when you think about a web, I think about interconnections and I think about interdependence. In what other ways have you all noticed that your courses of the liberal arts are interconnected and interdependent? Not just students, anybody in here. Go ahead. There's always a scientific as well as political and sociological side to things, it seems. They all seem interconnected on different levels. So you're getting multiple perspectives on the same issue. So you can think about all of these disciplines as being sort of separate tools by which to analyze whatever you're looking at, whatever subject it may be. Okay, I like that. I appreciate that. Anybody else got a different answer? You might learn an introduction to a character that I feel like William T. Booker in sociology, perhaps. But by taking a history class, you can get a larger picture on this person and see where they really came from 
what they've done and get the large background to them. So are you saying that it's something you might learn about in your sociology class your history teacher talked about? Yeah. Wow, what a shock. <laughs> <laughs> how much, how often has that happened for people in here? All the time. Yeah, all the time. How many times have you been sitting in a class and you think to yourself, hey, we were just talking about that two weeks ago in such and such class, right? That happens often, correct? If you're not noticing that, you need to pay closer attention. That's by design. That is exactly what is supposed to happen. Not necessarily because all of your teachers are giving you the same information or the same perspective on whatever it is you're talking about, but because you're getting a rounded, comprehensive view of what's going on. That's kind of the point, right? How many of you guys have ever taken a general education liberal arts course that when you signed up for it, you were like, I don't want to take this, I don't care about this, and you took the class, and 16 weeks later you were like, I'm really glad I took that class. Yeah, there's more of you that are just not willing to raise their hands right now, right? I mean... They would be giving in to you if that happened. Right. Exactly. Exactly. I mean, come on, guys. I teach sociology. Nobody enters college thinking they're going to be a sociology major. Nobody. It is only by accident, you know? And that is the case, of course, with other disciplines. Any other interconnections and interdependence in all of this? You yes? Ask, you could ask my um, ed psych uh, students. Uh, the overlap between the psychology of the general psychology and then applying it to education, or even the intro uh, to introduction to um, ed class. A lot of psychology involved in the work of teaching. Thank you. Anyone else? Yeah. Um, the scientific method tends to go across all class boundaries because it's just a, a way to organize your critical thinking. And so, actually, in the same day, you told our class that we needed to ask Vogel about something. And then I went to Vogel's class, and he was like, you guys need to ask Maher about that. That's <laughs> <laughs> great. So I think Elena alluded to this. Uh, she, talked about, she talked about versatility, right? She talked about adaptability. I mean, that's really what you're getting from the liberal arts, right? You're getting the skills by which to be adaptable and flexible in an ever-changing marketplace out there. I mean, how many different jobs are you going to have throughout the course of your life? If you walk into the marketplace with this very specific set of skills, hard skills, but not the soft skills around it, you may regret that when the job market changes and you lose that job and you don't have those soft skills to fall back on, which, as she pointed out, are the kinds of skills that employers are looking for. They can train you, any, how to, you know, how to do a specific task. What they need are people who know how to communicate, people who know how to problem solve, people who know how to utilize their creativity. People who know how to show up. Home? Oh. Home. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Attendance is important. One final time. Anybody else? Any kind of interconnection or interdependence? All right. Give her a hand. Okay. Thank you, everybody.